Today is Tuesday, August 13th. Sure is. Damien, what's on your mind? <laughs> uh, I, uh, what's on my mind? What's on my mind is that the thing, a, a theme, it's a theme of this channel, which is emerging a theme, which is that things don't work. And one of the reasons that we hire experienced people is to take us through broken systems. And just in the past three weeks, I've had three mini emergencies in the law firm where something that got filed properly was processed improperly. And I've, I've had to go back and and try to fix it. I could never predict these mistakes. You create a process so that you miss the mistakes, so you, that you prevent the mistakes that you've already seen happen. And if you're very wise, you listen to other people in your field and implement protections for mistakes that you haven't seen happen, but that you know exist because experienced people tell you they exist. But still, things remain unpredictable in broken systems because the systems are broken, right? Black swan events. So that's on my mind because I've been I've been dealing with it forever. And the other thing that's on my mind is I, I can't help but just laugh at JD Vance. JD Vance has to has to constitute the worst politician in all of human history because he was, he's too transparently fake. You know, he looked at Trump's shtick and Trump's shtick is just to be transparent with intentions. But Trump is like genuine in that he is a genuine cat. He genuinely wants to rule. He genuinely wants to be loved by everyone. He genuinely only wants what's good for him. J.D. Vance genuinely wanted to be president, but that's it. Everything else about him, he turned into kind of a fake shtick. He went from this kind of intellectual that straddled the middle, wrote hillbilly elegy, criticized Trump, whatever it was. And I'm just, I'm having trouble making sense of things today. Okay, there's so much unpredictable stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at potential world leaders who aren't at all what they say they are. And I just, uh, I need help. I need help, Keith. I don't know how to handle it. I got someone for you. You've got someone? Who? I got someone. You'll see her, you'll meet her in a second. Is she here? Almost. Let me check my watch. Almost. So should I just take 10? Well, we'll go in the other room. Right. Go in the other room. Hi, Seychelles. Thank you so much. Um, Keith Higgins told me that uh, you could potentially solve my problem. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm an immigration lawyer, as he probably told you. I've got three cases for three different people that are just so frustrating. I can't seem to get my head around them. I was hoping that maybe you could provide some insight. I understand that you are trained and capable at divination. Um, that is correct. <laughs> Uh, it's not really a training. It's something you have to be born with. All of us are intuitive in our own right. It's if we choose to tap into it. But to answer your question, yes, I can answer with the help of my cards today, any question you may have to pose. Okay, well, great. So I, you know, I have my folder here and I was just going to kind of, I have three stories that I kind of want to share with you. Uh, what's the best way to do this? How does this work? Um, as I'm shuffling, I want you to just tell me about the story. And when you feel ready, tell me when to stop shuffling. Um, this is a client. It's a woman. Her name is Amara. She's 29 years old and originally from Jamaica. She came to the U.S. on a tourist visa about two years ago to visit her sister and her family in Atlanta. But she accidentally overstayed her visa by six months due to a mix-up with her flight arrangements and the subsequent cancellation of her return ticket. To make matters worse, her family in Jamaica has found out about her situation and is now blackmailing her somehow. Uh, she, they're threatening to reveal her immigration status to authorities unless she sends them a significant amount of money every month. This complicates her case, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as she's worried about both her immigration status and the security of her family back home. What would you say to her? Tell me when to stop shuffling. Let me, let me feel it out. Stop shuffling now. Pick a pile, one, two, or three. Pile two. As of right now, her immigration status does definitely hang in the balance. The fact that she has the wheel of fortune upright, her luck can change, but it requires her to look at things from a different perspective to move a little bit more smarter. There is some deception, as you've already called out, because she has the moon in the upright. But if she taps into what's ethical, 
and put some boundaries in place with her family, they can't really do anything for her. Um, yes, they can call the authorities, but I don't see anything panning out with it with how immigration is moving right now. She would just get stuck in the system. The problem is she needs to get out of her head and figure out what is her plan. She doesn't have a plan. She's just hoping to get out of this jam and she's being very irresponsible and taking things for granted. So she can ultimately, she would ultimately be her own demise. She'd be the reason for her own demise with this situation. As a, as a follow-up, you said the moon is in the upright. Is, is the moon the, that which is signaling deception? Where is this? Where is this? Where, where is this? When you think about the moon, let uh, I'll give you a quick uh, a quick school lesson on the planet. What the planets? When it comes to the moon, the moon goes in phases. So if you follow moon cycles, when you're in a new moon cycle, things are at its darkest. Things are hidden. When you're in a full moon, that's when the moon is at its brightest. So depending on one when this situation happened and what state you know, what phase the moon was in really would tell a lot about the overall situation. But when a moon card comes in tarot, it talks about something that is hidden, something that is being elusive in a sense. It's like illusions, deception. Does the, does the, does the moon card, can we, just because I'm a lawyer, so I'm trying to think of this you know, I'm trying to use our combined um, abilities here. To me, a moon also says 30-day cycle. Does it hint at any sort of timeline for when things get better? You know, if you see a moon card, can you say, wait 30 days, you know, wait two months, wait wait a blue moon? Yeah. The moon is number 18, and, and it's a major arcana. 18 simplified down to a single number is nine. So anything divisible by nine, nine days, nine weeks, nine months, 18 days, 18 weeks, 18 months. So potentially I could tell her, hey, maybe this gets resolved in 18 weeks, but you have to take responsibility for the situation, not pin it on your family. Correct. She's not, mm -hmm. she, she needs to have an honest talk with herself. She came with a plan that went left and she went left with the plan. It's like she's being distracted. That's, that's so interesting because that's exactly what I would tell her. Like if on those facts, just as a lawyer, I would have wanted to say, you know, you have to take responsibility for your own status. It's not up to your family. I understand there's blackmail. There's ways to deal with that. But you have to take the time. And, you know, technically speaking, what we should do is try to file an extension nunc pro tunc, which is Latin meaning now for then, as you know, which means that you tell the government, hey, we're, fi we're filing this late, but can you treat it? Like we filed it back then when it wasn't late. And that would take about, you know, 18 weeks to process. So that's that's great. So now I can, now that's something where you've given me a different view on it, a very spiritual view that I can bring back to her. Is there anything else we might wrap this up for her? To, anything else that you would um, have her know, Amara Thompson, anything else that's showing in the cards? Yes, she's definitely going to be up for a fight. She has the seven of wands, which is defending yourself. If you look at the card, mm. he's phasing off six other wands. Oh, and wow. Okay. He has the seventh wand. She is the seventh wand. Why I like this is because the old foundation is crumbling. And if you can advocate for her to say, hey, things in Jamaica hasn't been you know, so nice. It's been a lot of killings, a lot of wars. You know, they just had the devastation with the hurricane. Let's go for sleep. The Four of Wands talks about a new beginning. And I like the fact that it's in the upright because this talks about new beginnings, celebrating a strong foundation, some type of achievement. And then you have the magician card. So it tells me she has a little inner witchiness or magicalness in her. She just has to tap in. And exactly what I said to you in the beginning, everyone has a gift. You just have to tap into it. The King of Wands is could be you because this is someone that has bold leadership, someone that is holding the reins, that's steering the cart, that's not putting the cart before the horse. Make sense? Yeah. So I can be like the kind of expert leader she needs on this. Okay. So that's fantastic. So she had, I want to, she, and the wheel, how does the wheel come into it again? Just so if you. Wheel of Fortune is luck. Okay. The luck. Wheel when of Fortune is luck. It's, 
in the when it's in the reverse, a reverse means there's doors that needs to be closed. There's things that need to be reevaluated. But as a will, because it's cyclical, what happens? It has to come back upright. Mm. The fact that it came in the upright says now is the time. Luck is on her side. But again, she has to be able to check herself, take accountability, and listen to your advice, listen to your recommendations. I agree. I agree. So when you go in front of the judge, she can you can say, hey, judge, yes, she overstayed her welcome. She's trying to escape a bad situation. She's come here and she's become a model citizen. She started a business. She's working at this job. You know, show her achievements. But if you don't have any, what can you advocate for? So tell her to give you something to advocate for. Yeah, make her make her take ownership of the case and say, hey, I need to go in front of the judge with you on this. I need you to help me. Okay. Help me help you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That was excellent. I didn't know that was going to be so good. That is fantastic. All right. So um, I have a second one whenever you're ready. Ethan Williams, a 34-year-old U.S. citizen, is dating a woman from another country in East Europe named Helena, whom he met online. Ethan and Helena have been together for several months, and Ethan is considering the possibility of marriage. He is afraid about some things that he has in his background. Uh, When he was younger, he had been arrested for several uh, break-ins and an assault and spent four to five years in prison. But that was well over 15 years ago. He wants to understand the best way to ensure that his marriage will be beneficial for Helena's immigration status without him or her ultimately getting into any trouble. I don't think there's much trouble there to be had, but he's not so sure about this. So he wants a full reading and a full request. And although Ethan is genuinely interested in Helena and is contemplating marriage for real, he is also worried about the legal implications and wants to understand the boundaries of immigration law better in case things with him and Helena don't work out. And I would say stop shuffling now. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with this one, you know, because he has got that. He's got that. So right off the bat, yeah, Spirit is telling me he needs to be clearer on his intentions because it sounds like he's walking in with one foot out the door already. So Mm. it's going to be a situation where it's, hey, you help me, I help you. He Mm -hmm, needs to be mm -hmm. very clear on boundaries with that because this is where bitterness comes in with females. You don't want anyone to feel used in a situation like this, but pick a pile, one, two, or three. Ethan feels like a one to me. Okay. First of all, the young lady that is in question, she is not the personality for him. She comes in as Mm. the first reverse, meaning she's very weak in the knees for this guy. So anything he sweet talks her and says to her, she'll do essentially in the name of love. Um, Ethan is a strong communicator, meaning he also knows how to finesse the situation. He can literally sweep you off your feet with his words. He's a sweet per se. Um, right now they're good. They're really at a standstill and there's too much that is being juggled within this union. So I don't even know if it'd get off before it, 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 it's like, it's fizzling out before it even gets off the ground. Mm, mm, mm. Do you think there's any evil energy there? Like from her end, you said that she's is, is, just because she's the polar opposite. Does that mean and in, imply any kind of evil intent or does that just mean something else? No, um, I wouldn't say an evil intent. It's more of a, she doesn't have the confidence to stand up for herself. So people walk all over her. So she has a weak, like a weak maternal instinct meaning she doesn't know how to really so much be nurturing. She knows how to be nagging, just not nurturing. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Yeah, go ahead. With the two of them, honestly, with Ethan's brains and her work ethic, they could be a good couple. But again, this venture would be very risky for them because it would be more emotional than anything. And yeah, I, and you know, I could see that. So like stepping in whenever you're looking for a partner and she's all the way in Europe and you've met online, right? The emotional bond has to be stronger than the rational bond. 
right? Doesn't it? Um, yeah, one of them, and I'm picking up Ethan, is too self-absorbed. Uh, he's very withdrawn. Like, he, again, he's a sweet talker. He's, like, how do you want to say it? He's cash sexual, meaning anything in his benefit, he's willing to do. It has to benefit him in the end. The two of swords reverse in the future tense is what concerns me because it's a card of think twice. Okay. So you're already at an indecision. You're already in your head mm. about it. Listen to your intuition. But go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's interesting. Okay. I was just looking at the card. Yeah. I really wish I knew their zodiac sign. One of them has to be a water sign. So um, so I have that information. So I can tell you, I can't tell you his birthday because I can't identify him and um um, but he was he was born in mid March. Mid March could be Pisces, depending on where um, the the most half of March, going until about the nineteenth twentieth, is Pisces. So if it's around that time, he would be a water sign. So okay, so he's a water sign, but he's also cash sexual, and he has this criminal background that really um, he's worried about. To me, you know, it's funny. I would have said that here's a guy who who felt like more reformed to me because he was so worried about his past, almost like he was embarrassed about it. But it sounds like you're feeling too that he hasn't let go some of the maybe ego or some of the me first kind of cash sexual energy that he has. Yeah, definitely. The lovers in reverse came out. This is definitely a mismatch. Um, mm -hmm, that's pretty on the nose. This, again... He 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 knows how to get what he wants with her um, to kind of sum this up. Do you remember the Lifetime movie about the guard who broke the guy out out of love? There was a Lifetime. Keith, do you remember the Lifetime movie about a guard who broke somebody out out of love? I don't, but we can look it up. What's the title of it? We don't know the off of a real story that actually happened. There was a, a CO in some off Midwest town and she uh, she helped two inmates escape. One of them she was actually dating and he basically made her believe that he was in love with her. He was, you know, she was his everything. This lady then put her pension on the line. It was premeditated. She resigned in just enough time. This is what this young lady would be like. It's like no matter what Ethan tells her, she's going to hold on to it like it's the last breath. Oh, interesting. So you're, you're fearing for her. You're fearing that she might be the victim in this, potentially. She's going to be the victim because mm. Ethan is relentless. Ethan, this is not the first and it's not going to be the last for him. Interesting. Okay. That put, I'm going to, I'm going to walk back into that case with. Seven of Swords came out. This is definitely deception. This is realizing you're being self-deceptive. I tell everyone, by all means, lie to me. Just don't lie to yourself. Ethan is trying to justify what he does and how he does it for his actions. The reason why he's worried about the legal implications, because if things go awry and I'm picking up that there's something else, I don't know if this lady comes from money or something. And then you got the devil in reverse that ends off the deck. Mm -hmm. That's power gained through corruption, through evil means. So to answer your question, I said no earlier. It ended it. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, you know, the, the, I'm vibing with this because those are the vibes I got. I got some really weird vibes from this guy. So that's that, that vibes. Okay. That tracks. I think that's definitive for me. Um, um, can I, when you're ready, I got the last one for you here. You're shuffling. So I'll start. Uh, Sophia Nee is a 27-year-old software engineer from Vietnam, and she has been offered a job by a tech startup in Silicon Valley. The company is eager to hire her, but has some unconventional requirements, such as an unusual employment contract that includes stock options and profit-sharing arrangements that are not standard in her field. Right so off the bat, I'm hearing um, MLM. Mm, MLM Silicon Valley. That could vary. I didn't even think about that. That could be it. Oh, interesting. 
Sophia is concerned about how these unique job terms might affect her eligibility for an H-1B work visa and wants to ensure that her visa application is in compliance with immigration regulations. Um, what should she be aware of to ensure that her job offer aligns with immigration requirements? And then you can stop shuffling now. By any chance, do you know if most of their hires are HB1 visas? A lot of H1Bs in that industry, yeah. Yeah. Free labor, yeah, sure. tax breaks, pick a pile, one, two, or three. Mm. I'm feeling two again for some reason. I, I thought I'd feel three, but I'm feeling two. Say her name again for me, please. Sophia Nee. Sophia Nee. Sophia Nee. This has her really worried. Like, I see her, like, biting her hands. And, yeah, Seven of Wands starts off. Um, she's going to definitely have to be defending herself from something. Um, the sad part is she can learn a lot from this job, but it makes me wonder, is she learning the correct thing? She is literally drained right now. She, it, It's like she doesn't, she doesn't know if she's coming or going. What she needs to look out for right now is self-serving relationships, which this position sounds like. It doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like the HB1 visa recipients. It, it sounds sweet, but it doesn't feel sweet. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Do you think that she has she has reason to worry for her safety? Is there anything like that coming up, or is it is it more just like this is a bad opportunity? I think it's more of a bad opportunity. She's making it out to be more than what it possibly could be in her mind. Like you got the two of wands, the eight of swords, the eight of swords is someone that is stuck in their head. Um, mental imprisonment. The two of wands tells me she needs to look to other opportunities. Use this as a stepping stone. Don't use it as something long term. If she can get um, nine of cups reverse, bad host, someone that is selling you a sweet dream. Interesting. She needs to tap into her strength. And look, the double card comes back out with the wheel of fortune in the reverse. Yeah, this is not a good opportunity for her. But if right now her hands is tied, she needs to look into other opportunities to where even if she has to kind of start back from the bottom, she's going to have to to secure her future. But this is uh, this, the seven of cups in reverse is delusion, um, wishful thinking. The issue for her is that she can't, it's really hard to get an H-1B job, you know, because this employer has kind of sponsored her and they went through the lottery and all this is in place. So she can't really switch without waiting an entire year and then getting lucky in a lottery for the one of these H-1B visas again. All she could really do is try to return to school for a master's, which would be expensive because she's going to pay full freight. Like, what do we... But that's what you said. You already said there's an impossible, there might be an impossible choice. Right. So she she's kind of having she has the five of swords in a reverse in the future. That tells me she's going to have to avoid she's going to have to just cut her losses and move on. Um, the five of swords mm -hmm. reverse is somebody walking away, throwing down your sword. Mm -hmm. and saying, this. <laughs> got it. Got it. So it's like this. This is where if I was to counsel her, it would be like, hey, this sounds like a opportunity that is not what it seems. And and as painful as it is, I know you want to stay in the U.S. and work on this, but maybe you need to walk away and um, maybe you go to school, maybe you go to Vietnam, but I, this, this, this opportunity is going to cripple you maybe mentally or put you on the wrong path for a long time. No, definitely. You hit it on the head. She got the Ten of Cups in the reverse as well. Again, that's emotions. The star reverse with the hermit. She's being asked to sit still. She's not listening to she's not listening to her inner guidance. She actually needs a mentor. But again, Paige of Swords tells me she needs to look at other perspectives. Um, she definitely needs to look at other perspectives. Right now, um the, the, the fact that she got the magician reversed as the last card, but it's hopeful because right now, if she takes action right now, she may find a better opportunity. It again, may not be what she wants, but 
listening to your advice, pivot. She needs to pivot. The magician in reverse is about manipulation. Something, there's some type of trickery going on. And immediately when you started reading the case, I heard MLM. There's some type of Ponzi scheme going on here. And I don't even know if this company is going to make it past the next four weeks, four days, four days, four weeks, four months. Mm. And there was a, there was a closing that was just announced yesterday, not in the same company, but like a battery company in California was announced recently. They laid up $120, $150 million company just dissolved overnight. Yeah, you got to so listen. Mm. The old adage, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is great. I didn't even think through it in these ways. I feel like I'm, I'm ready to, to, to give them good advice. Okay, this is really, that was it. That's really it. That that was fantastic. I have one last thing. So with our last 15 minutes, I have I want to try doing one last reading for JD Vance. He is the current vice presidential candidate uh for uh the Republican Party. Okay. okay. I'm being asked to get a specific deck one second. Okay. Um, the ancestor deck is calling to me, and I'm also going to pull um, angel answer oracle cards because I have a feeling you're going to be asking some yes, no questions. So we'll let the cards answer that. And if okay. I can tap in intuitively, I will. But this ancestor deck that I'm going to be pulling, um, it is an African god deck. Give me one second. Um. So we're using an angel deck and an answers deck. Yes. So the angel deck, hold on, I'll show you. The angel deck is by Radley Valentine. Okay. And the African gods deck is by Diego de, de Oxy. And these are other psychics and sages? Is that how that works? Other deities. Other deities. Okay. So we're working with archangel energy. We're working with uh african ancestral energy what's the uh what's the specific archangel energy and african ancestral energy about like how are they how are they unique compared to what we've been using so i was just using a traditional tarot deck um rider weight very a very traditional deck um tarot has specific meanings where these are oracle cards so these tap into the higher realms to give you answers spiritually on what's going on Okay, that sounds um, awesome. I have to say the last wasn't spiritual because it was more so, again, tarot tells a specific story. With tarot, each card does have a specific meaning. It does mean something. Where oracle, oracle is all-knowing. So it's going to tap into, like I said, other ethers and be able to bring out a spiritual connotation of what kind of to expect from this presidential candidate. Okay. And for funds and kicks... I'm going to pull one card from his past life to Ooh. show you how it ties into his current life. Oh, I like I like these funds and kicks idea. Pulling a past card out of this guy's life is going to be fun. <sighs> Keith is chuckling over here. Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to talk as uh, I'm going to talk as JD Vance. Okay. okay. One second. You're gonna. Tell me to stop shuffling three times as I shuffle uh, three decks. So we're going to start with the first one. Uh, okay. Tell me when to stop shuffling and think about what, I don't know if you want to ask the questions out loud or. No, I'm just, I am. Th okay. I am just thinking of a particular question that always comes to mind when I see JD Vance and I've just got some questions. Think about that and then tell me when to stop shuffling. You can stop shuffling now. Pick a pile, one, two, or three. Three. So it's already starting off tumultuous. <laughs> it's a, okay, let's do it. I'm going to hear it. What do we got? We got two more decks. Oh, we're doing three Oracle decks for JD fans. Tell me when to stop shuffling. You can stop shuffling now. Okay. Okay. Oh. Tell me when to stop shuffling. Stop shuffling now. All right. And one more. Call his name three times for me. J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. 
I'm going to take this one because this one was a jumper. Okay. All right. Hey, yo. Got jumpers. Stop shuffling now. So he actually has a couple of lies, a couple of timelines um, merging right now. Right off the bat, I'm getting that he does. he's not confident he's going to win. <laughs> oh, I don't think he's confident he's going to win at all. Okay. Let's see what the cards have to say. I just... Yeah. He's a man that is... He comes off as the king of cups. He has good emotional maturity to a sense. He can be tolerant. He has great people skills. But to the point where he talks himself in and out of stuff. He's a guy... Hold on. He's a guy that... <laughs> I wonder if he's a Gemini. Do we know his birth date? We can look it up. Let's look up J.D. Vance's birth date. J.D. August 2nd, 1984. No, his birthday is tomorrow. He is a Virgo or no, he's still wearing Leo. He's a Leo. Okay. This is weird. So, all right. Maybe this is his father, and I'm going to say why I'm saying that. I got the mm -hmm. King of Cups in the upright and the Page of Cups in the reverse. Can we look up his father's birthday? August 15th, 1959. Oh, no, 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 never mind. July 6th, 2024. He died July 6th. He was born July 30th, 1956. July 30th is... Still Leo. So they're two Leos. Okay. Okay. This makes okay. sense. Okay. This makes sense. They're two Leos. The father, I'm for some reason I'm picking up on his father. Okay. His father was the temperament, emotional, emotionally balanced, creative people teacher. Like he was a good people, like he, he knew how to work a crowd. Yeah. Unfortunately, his son is a prick. I'm sorry to say it. Like, yeah, yeah. He is very emotionally immature. He acts like a child. Um, he's the type that, give me my ball, I'm going home, I don't want to play with you guys anymore type of attitude. Mm -hmm. um, he, would, he would not make a very good leader for this. For him, he, like I said, he's already walking into this race with dim luck. Like He knows it, it, it's a long shot. The thing is, he has the wheel of fortune in the upright. Oh, that, that was like our first case. He had the Wheel of Fortune in the upright. Right. But it's, again, one of those situations. Our political climate is a circus right now, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With him, he is being given this opportunity, but he's, he's not one. <laughs> I'm stuttering all over the place because that is the climate of his household. That is the climate of his life. It is... Remember when I first started, I didn't even start shuffling. I said, this is starting tumultuous already. That is his life right now. This is one big shit show for him. And it's tearing his household apart. His wife does not like him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm feeling that too. But you said the wheel. Remember you had the wheel you had taught. I'm just trying to learn. He has doors that are open still open behind him in his past that he's trying to go back and close. Is it possible that he can't? Yeah, that's yeah. not happening. <laughs> that's not happening at all. What's he hiding? Is he, is the tumultuousness hiding anything? Um, let's see. He's financial irresponsible. Uh, he would send this country into ruin. Mm. Uh, he is very underdeveloped. He, Someone is using him as a buffer, it looks like. Because guess what? We got the moon reversed. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so what does that mean? Because I think he's being used by all sorts of people. What does that moon reverse mean? Very, a very distorted look. We're being deceived. And like, like again, the powers that be are doing what they do. And they don't want to make it look like other forces are at play. So let's throw someone underdeveloped, underqualified out there. Let him make a fool of himself to take some of the distraction from what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. That's just what he is. Um, and not for nothing, 
his beginning and end is going to be very fast. It's going to fizzle out very fast. He's not going to be able to let go of this. His mom, I don't know if she's still alive, but she is going to play a part for him. He has a weak defense. Like his campaign is weak. His foundation with this whole campaign is just very off. Does he have any shadows that are looming over him? Very much a lot of mental conflict. So let's look into his past life. Let's see where that plays into part. Because um, in two of his past lives that's coming up right now, I'm going to talk about these two first and show you how it ties in, and then we're going to pull another okay. one. Um, in his first past life, he was in some type of law. He was either a judge, a lawyer. He was responsible to make laws or law enforcement. He identified as a woman in this lifetime. Yo, no. He was a, he finished law school and you're saying, and he identified, okay, tell me more about him identifying as a woman. How is that coming out in the cards? Cause that's gotta be spot on. So him identifying as a woman can mean a few things. It can be feminine energy that's coming through that we're picking wow. up on. It can be that a feminine figure figured prominently in his life. But as his identity as a woman, this was during the late modern age. So again, remember I said his timelines are, colli are, are colliding. So outside of him coming up during the late modern age, he was located in the Middle East. He had a philosophical faith. He, was, he had a widow or widower type of love, meaning he was a widow. Um, and his... He grew up in Middle East Ohio. That's crazy. Okay. This is so interesting. Now, his lesson to learn during this lifetime was learning to walk the middle path. What is he doing right now? Walking the middle path. Pretending to be straight and not gay. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> you said it. <laughs> no, I mean, he, if, if he identifies as a woman and he's walking the middle path of acceptance, then and he said in his book that he had been gay once, and then he talked himself out of it. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. That makes a lot of sense because Yo! Listen, listen, that was his lesson. That was his lesson, right? The trauma that he had to overcome during this time was material loss. And again, what did I say? He's financially irresponsible. Yeah, and he's backed by a bunch of billionaires, and he failed his way up through companies. He would fail, and then they would give him another venture, and now they're just like paying money to the Trump campaign to keep him on. That makes total sense to me for him to be financially responsible. A financially responsible guy would do it himself. Here is the irony. You ready? Yeah. She died by, she died by childbirth. Now, don't think of a literal birth. Think of a figurative birth. Uh, let's go to the let's go to the next timeline this guy was a reborn catholic and he comes out as a straight catholic man that's what i'm hearing <laughs> no way join this okay so the next life he was in some type of world war whether yeah. he was an allied defender an allied invader during the Holocaust or during Hiroshima. During this life, he identified as a lover. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> during the World War age, he was located in a lost civilization. He had a fanatical faith and a spinster type love. Now, his lesson to learn during this time was becoming more natural. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he had to overcome. Oh, keep learning. Keep learning, buddy. He had to <laughs> overcome his trauma that he had to overcome was oppression. Yes. And he died by miscarried or at birth again. So he has reincarnated quite a few times and he's still not getting it right. <laughs> That's crazy. So he was but he was a man that died at birth. So during, he identified as a lover. So we don't know. Oh, in we don't time, know. He could have been out. Well, right. In the time of LGBTQTIA, he has no identity. I guess he would be, as they say, um, he doesn't identify as anything. Interesting. So he's carried this tension inside of himself for at least two lifetimes before he's come here. 
So let's ask that question. Ask it again. I have one more question. I have, a, I have a question just, what does this mean? You know, cause I'm an immigration lawyer. Can you see, and we got one minute left. What does this mean for immigration? How would J.D. Vance handle immigration in this country? What would he do if given that sort of power with the sort of conflicting nature that we've seen in his past lives? The first message he got is sometimes the best win is to choose what you're willing to lose. So yeah. to answer your question, would he be willing to sacrifice immigration for a greater feat? for something that he deems more important? Absolutely. Mm. Does immigration stand a chance under his, um, regardless of what his views are from what the ancestors are saying, he would never stand up for them. Mm. He doesn't have the courage to. Mm. He would have to be honest with himself, with who he is and live in his truth during this presidency and he couldn't. There you have it. Seychelles, this was much awesomer than I could have hoped for. I couldn't believe actually how close what you had seen and divined was to what I would have told clients. I didn't think that was going to be the case, to be quite honest, when we did this. But um, there's more than one way to provide an answer in this world. And I thoroughly enjoyed meeting you. And yeah. I'm going to look at you. And uh, I hope we can do this again. I'm down. And, I had fun. And I'm, <laughs> well, so good. I'm so glad Keith recommended that I talk to you because I had these problems. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day.